If you've done a lot with CSS transforms, you know one of the annoying things with it, especially if you're doing animations or transitions, is if you have a translate and a rotate on it, let's say, when you do your animation on it, you have to repeat both properties, even if only one of them is changing, or having to worry about the order of transform and rotate, which always is just one of those what's happening type of things. Well, luckily we don't have to worry about any of that anymore because there's a new way to write transforms. Now this is possible because the level two of the transform spec has, is out. The browsers are now supporting it. Now instead of having to do a transform and then using a rotate function, a transform function and a scale function, each one of those is now its own property. Now this is fantastic because if we just want to use one of them, we don't have to write transform, rotate, and then rotate it. We can just rotate and put the degrees you want and that's it. So we're already saving some characters there. Also, if we are doing transitions and animations, now we just have to focus on the property that we want to transform. We don't have to worry about repeating the different parts that aren't actually being changed. And of course, as I mentioned off the top, the order of like rotate and translate used to be really important and now it just works the way you'd expect it to in the first place. So how these three properties work is mostly the same, though not maybe quite as you'd expect it. So with our translate one, it, as you'd expect it, I guess, on this one, but you can give it one value, two values, or three values, very similar to how we would do it before. But when you give it the third value, it's just going to act as if it's a translate 3D. So of course, if you throw a perspective on there or something, you can start seeing things actually in perspective with uh, the Z index coming in on there. Rotate is one of the ones that's a little bit stranger <laughs> in that you can just throw a rotate on there and it's going to assume it's on the Z axis, which is the way it always works. Um, but if you do want to do more of a 3D rotation, you actually have to say which axis you're on. So you want to do the X, you do you throw the letter X in there, put a space and then put in the number that you want, which uh, caught me off guard and it wasn't how I expected things to work. Or if you do want to simulate uh, like a rotate 3D, you can put in the three vector number things and then the degrees that you're going to want and then it acts like rotate 3D and you get more of like all three of them twisting and turning and moving around. Then there's scale, which works as I guess you'd expect it to, where it's one or two values will work the way one or two values always did. And if you add a third value in, it's gonna act like a scale 3D, where then you're also dealing with the Z axis as well. And if you're excited about learning these and you'd like to know more CSS properties that are a little bit undervalued, but which are really, really useful, there is a video here that I'd really recommend that you check out. And with that, I'd like to say a very big thank you to my supporters of all awesome over on Patreon. Jan, Johnny, Lucas, Mr. Dave, Patrick, Simon, Stephen, and Tim, as well as all my other patrons for their monthly support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.